What is going on guys, welcome to this video. My name is indeed Kyle Cooper. Today I'll be reviewing Incredibles 2. This movie I've been anticipating for 14 years, so has a lot of other people. Why did we get a Cars trilogy before this? Why the hell was there talks about a Toy Story 4 before there was an Incredibles 2 talk? Whatever, but is this worth the wait? Yes, it is worth the wait. This movie does something that most films that wait this long don't do right. This is a direct sequel. It takes place seconds after the first one, and that gives the writers the creative will to stick with the same characters, just tell a different story. Because if they did it 14 years later, honestly, we would be seeing Jack-Jack in high school, Dash and Violet in college, maybe even having jobs. It wouldn't be the same. And props to the, the voice talent, uh, Brad Bird, because everything sounds and looks consistent it's honestly amazing how consistent this looks so you got to give them props on that because 14 years there's a lot of things you can mess up in 14 years and the consistency is like as if they made the movie a year ago maybe six months ago so props to them on that the comedy is a lot better listen the first incredibles movie was my number one pixar movie for the longest time so it's not me dissing on the the incredibles movie but this humor i feel like it's not that the fact that there's more of it, it's the fact that they, the laughs land even harder. And there was jokes that would cater to adults, but kids would be able to laugh at. There's not a lot of poopy jokes here and there, fart jokes. But I mean, they're like, there's one or two, but it fits the story. I'm not going to give away a scene, but it's when Bob is taking care of Jack-Jack and like he's like doesn't know what to do. And he's like, oh, look, Jack-Jack, you'll be easy to take care of. He takes a giant shit in his diaper. That's comedy because it works for the story. It's not just like, oh, look, poop. It's it's funny because parents can understand where that, that is coming from. It's not just a poop joke to have a poop joke. It fits the story. The most comedy comes from Jack-Jack. I'm not going to spoil anything in this movie because honestly, just go watch this movie for yourself. But there is a scene where... Jack-Jack really starts using his abilities for the first time in the movie. And this is where the movie really starts picking up. I'm not going to say what or to who, but he starts using his abilities. And honestly, it was... I don't recall laughing this hard in that animated movie since the Lego movie. It was something special. I'm going to say that every scene with Jack-Jack, I was really excited to see. Now, I want to really get into Elastigirl's uh, story arc. And this is where the film is more action-packed and stuff like that because she's focused on the more heroic stuff. It was a lot of fun, I'm going to say that. And she was working with a bunch of other supers and stuff like that and it was kind of expanding this world, trying to make supers legal again. And I found that stuff very, like, James Bond, very fun. And I was very, uh, like, entertained with that stuff. And with the editing and the pacing... Cutting back to Elastigirl's story and Bob's story, we take care of the kids and stuff like that. I felt like it was a perfect blend and the perfect pacing because, yes, there will be times where I'll be like, okay, I want to see what's going on with Bob's story. And then I will go switch to Bob's story. It's not the fact that I was never bored of Elastigirl's story. I was never bored of Bob's story. It was the fact that I was so intrigued on both stories that I wanted to get a good amount of both. And we get an equal amount of both while still getting the full action and comedy that we like. More the uh, comedy side's on the Bob story side, and the co the action is more on the last girl story side, but then everything kind of merges in the final act, and I had a lot of fun with this movie. The one complaint I'm going to have to have is the villain. Uh, I had a couple days to think about this, and now I'm pretty sure that I would prefer uh, Syndrome over this villain, because this villain came off very... I won't say cliche, it came off very obvious. There was no surprises. It's not like they were trying to do a twist or anything like that. They they were just like, yeah, that's gonna be the villain. Um, it was just a little predictable. I would like a little something different. And the motives I can understand, uh, but it was a little too on the nose, if you know what I mean. But I really enjoyed this movie. And I definitely recommend you guys watch this. This is a worthy sequel. The question of the day is going to be, is it better than the first one? I'm going to need a, a, another viewing in a couple more weeks to think about it because, I mean, the first one has been in my memory for 14 years. So it's my one of my earliest going movie going experiences in uh, memory. It's not going to be fair if I just throw it out there right now. I'm going to need a couple weeks to uh, really consider that, and then I'll let you guys know on Twitter. I'm going to rate this movie 4.5 out of 5 stars. Thank you guys for watching. I have a Twitter, Instagram, a couple underscore videos. Go follow me there for the latest news and updates on my channel, guys. 
Thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe, and all crap. Later and goodbye.